when I started, uh, I remember my mom and dad moved me into a, an apartment just up the street here. And my father just took the whiteboard and just wrote down, take it one day at a time. Every day I saw that and it really helped keep me grounded. This podcast is a production of Widener Law Commonwealth in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. For more information, visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu slash podcast. Hello and welcome to Widener Law Commonwealth's podcast. I'm your host, Tara Mead. In this edition, we're going to be talking with Paul Edger, one of our distinguished alums who not only has a very successful legal career, but has continued to give back to the community. And that includes our students and fellow alumni. Paul is president of our law school's alumni board, but he also works with several charities in our area. He was instrumental in orchestrating our Wills for Heroes event here on our campus, and that's a free service that provides wills, living wills, and other important documents for first responders, veterans, and their spouses and partners. And I would be remiss if I didn't um, mention that uh, at that last Wills for Heroes event, uh, Paul received the 2022 Pro Bono Award for legal assistance efforts. Now, he currently works at the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General as a senior deputy attorney general, and he also is an adjunct professor here on our campus. Paul, welcome, or should I say, welcome back to our campus. Thank you. <laughs> Always a pleasure to be on campus. <laughs> I'm sure. So in many ways, it probably feels like you never really left Widener Law Commonwealth following your graduation. But can you take us back to the time when you were a student here and sort of share some of your experiences? You know, first off, what activities were you involved in, including student organizations and the like? Sure. So when I first came to campus, I knew I wanted to get involved and I wanted to do things that I wouldn't have done in undergrad or back home. So first thing I did was I ran for Student Bar Association, wanted to uh, try something new in that regard. I was uh, lucky enough to be elected as the 1L representative. Uh, so got my foot in the door there to represent our, our class. I think at the time enrollment was like 220 students. So it, it was big. I know those numbers aren't the same nowadays. Uh, did that my first year. Uh, stayed with the student bar my second year as well. Got to be the Pennsylvania Bar representative for Widener, which ironically then opened up the door for me and all I've done with the Pennsylvania Bar since then. So I got to do a lot with the Pennsylvania Bar. Uh, I represented Widener with the American Bar Association as well. And I just happened to become acquainted with the Third Circuit Governor for Law Student Division, and how the ABA sets theirs up is similar to the circuit courts. Uh, four states, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, that was the Third Circuit that Widener fell in. Mm. And because of that, and my role uh, here at Widener, they asked me to be the Lieutenant Governor for the student bars in the circuit. Had fun, couldn't say no. But because of that, then they asked me to run for governor when the term ended for the my then uh, boss, and I was lucky enough to be elected as governor of the Third Circuit for a year between my second and my third year. Had a great time. Uh, it was the I was the first Widener student to have that that title. I'm hoping somebody has since followed in my shoes here since then. <laughs> uh, but I I loved every moment of that, and it really gave me the opportunity to lead. And it really helped me to do what Wider was pushing me to do, which was to make a change in society to better our profession. And that was my first real ability to do that. Uh, so if I wasn't busy enough doing those things, uh, I was fortunate to be involved in the Federal Society here. Um, another student by name of Stephen Billy, who now works for a congressman, I think down in North Carolina, asked me nice. to help him lead uh, the Federal Society. We brought the lead plaintiff's counsel who argued Heller versus District of Columbia, which at the time was the landmark gun control case. Mm, Since then, okay. we've obviously had a bigger one come out in the last year. Uh, but he came on campus. He argued with Professor Domino. It's a lot of fun to get to then go to dinner with him, see what it's like to argue before the Supreme Court. Wow. So fun experience. Yeah, so kept myself busy on campus. I also had an externship with PennDOT, uh, just that was more just for the career side. Wanted to have a foot in the door when I when I left campus. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you said, I was on campus constantly, and if I wasn't here, I was keeping myself busy in other ways. Well, certainly uh, busy, that's for sure. So, when we're talking about classes and professors, um, were there any that really stood out to you as being really helpful in helping you to launch your law career? So, at the end of the day, every professor was helpful. Let, let's be honest. Um, I have more stores that I remember of good times than I do of the frustrating times, and that's including during finals as well. 
Uh, I can remember John Kapowski teaching civil procedure, and he would always play a, some rock music in the beginning. And the very first class he had come in, the day before, he had made some joke to then Dean Ammons, uh, who was the dean of uh, Widener Harrisburg at the time. Mm -hmm. And he came in that first day, very first class of my professional career, and said, I don't know if I have a job today. He thought he was like just waiting for the dean to walk in. But, oh, my. So she came in, and it was more of a watching, <laughs> but I remember those things. Uh, you know, it was the way they taught us or the, the memories we formed because of the class is what then I remembered in my career. Mm -hmm. I can remember now uh, assault and battery and torts because I missed battery on uh, Chris Robinette's final exam, which was the difference between an A and a B. So now anytime I think of assault, this, I that immediately... That comes back think, to your head. Yep, assault oh, wow. and battery now. So, And it's just because <laughs> of, of how we had his exam. Uh, you know, Professor Dean uh, was my uh, evidence and crim pro professor. And I really used evidence more than any class here, just being a trial lawyer for so long, that I remember him mockingly knocking on the door, uh, you know, mimicking a gun with his hand, just being like, you know, hello, may I have your money? And that's how we taught breaking and entering and in his very subtle, retired U.S. attorney style. But it was the way they taught us that I could then use those in my career. Um, you know, it, it helped me remember things so that if I was standing up and arguing a case or if I was at the appellate courts, I had flashbacks to, a to the class. And mm. I could remember how something a professor yeah. said that allowed me to then go, wait, I know this one, and I could spit it out real quick. And so that was always very helpful. That's really neat that you have that experience. Like you, you, you learn the basics, but like you have those memories, and they can come back at those very opportune times. <laughs> it, it was very, I was very fortunate in that, and you know, I, I, like I said, there were a lot better times than there were frustrating times. I mean, final exams were their own thing, obviously. That's true. Uh, but you know, I, there were no classes that I regretted, <laughs> no professors that I wish was ever like I wish I didn't take this class. Everybody had their own style. We made it work, and. It, it's impacted me in my career now. And it sounds like you got something out of each class, yes. each professor that you interacted with, which is something that I think as a whole our team strives for. Absolutely. And, you know, in classes I never thought. I never thought I would ever need to do wills and estates. I took four credits with now Dean Hussey. And, you know, he has his very unique style of speaking. And as a professor, that's very unique as well. And uh, I never thought I would need that. I never thought I'd be writing wills for people. But as you mentioned in the beginning, I'm now a state coordinator for Wills for Heroes, and I'm nonstop reviewing estate packages, and I can just hear Mike Hussey in the back of my head most of the time, <laughs> uh, good or bad, depending on, on who you ask. But yeah, it's it's those the styles, their methods that really become impactful when the time is right, even if I didn't think at the time I would ever need it. So for current and prospective students who are just like you were busy juggling class demands, internships or externships and networking, and then on top of that, they're, they're taking part in activities on campus. So it's easy to put it mildly to get pretty busy and likely feel overwhelmed. So looking back at that time and, and maybe even now, what are, what are some tips that you would give them? What advice would you offer, especially to help them stay grounded and focused, but not gets themselves so super stressed out. Sure. Uh, you know, law school is a three to four year commitment so, and longer, depending on your circumstances. Um, you know, people have used the mentality, it's a marathon, it's not a race. And that's really true. When I started, uh, I remember my mom and dad moved me into a, an apartment just up the street here. And my father just took the whiteboard and just wrote down, take it one day at a time. Out of the blue, he's never really been a sentimental or a uh, philosophical guy by any means, but just mm -hmm. take it one day at a time. I'm like, okay, great, Dad. And I put the whiteboard up, and it just sat there. But every day I saw that, and it really helped keep me grounded. This is the assignment for this class, for this day, for this week. And if you break mm -hmm. it down into smaller increments, it's not as scary. You look at the semester at a time, I have 18 credit hours. I've got, you know, 500 pages to read today. That may seem scary, but it's okay. Civ Pro, I've got 40 pages. This, you know, this case is 15, you know, if you break it down and take it one thing at a time, I think it's a, it's more doable and it's, it's less right. scary at that right. point. Um, same thing with the law. I mean, the law can be scary. You know, there's so much pressure that's put on attorneys. There's so much pressure that are asked of us, whether it's commitments, time, responsibilities, or, you know, clients asking us to put their lives on us and say, fix it essentially. Taking it one day at a time, just this is the next step I need to accomplish, it, it makes it more reasonable. It makes it a lot easier to deal with at that point. 
So for law school, I would just say, think of it in just one step increments. Don't look at it a semester at a time. Don't look at three years and then two more months of, I got to take the bar exam, especially during the bar. I always say, take it one day at a time. Uh, there's no way if you look at the bar in a big picture, you're not going to freak out. And that's yeah. just, no matter your number one in your class or your number... Whatever. You know, yeah, number whatever. <laughs> um, you need to, you know, not look at it as one big thing. And at least that's what works for me again. It, maybe it's not for everybody. Um, I'd also say, you know, don't be afraid to say no. That's something I failed at very early on in my career. Um, whether it was being asked to lead something, whether it was being asked to take part in something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a person, if I get involved in something, I'm not doing it just to, to do it. I, I want to invest into it. So if it's a, a shelter I'm, I'm chairing now, I'm the chairman of the board of a homeless shelter in Carlisle. Mm-hmm. And you know, I oh, wasn't Safe Harbor, to, right? Safe Harbor. Yeah. So okay. if I just sat there and I did the, um, I just went to the meetings, I wouldn't be really committing myself mm-hmm. at that point. Um, so if you're going to do something on campus, make sure it's what you want to do. Don't just say, yes, I'm doing because you want to plaster your resume. That's good. Don't get me wrong. But commit yourself to something. If you're going to do it, give it your whole effort. And, and I think that's going to help you then become more interesting to a prospective mm-hmm. employer that, you know, hey, I did three things compared to the other person did 15, but 15, they didn't really do much. But in these three, I can give you accolades. I can give you leadership you know, opportunities that I had. And I think that makes you then more hireable as, as a student. But again, one day at a time, say no if you, once in a while when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's going to help you keep grounded and it's going to help you really further your career you know, comfortably without worrying about a burnout or worrying about needing to take a break or something like that. And keeping those healthy boundaries, it Absolutely. sounds like, too. You know, we don't take care of ourselves as attorneys. I mean, let's be honest. It's Attorneys need to take care of themselves because of the pressure of the job and the pressure of the clients that we serve. Mm-hmm. But you know, find things that you like to do. Find things you want to do outside of work. Put boundaries up. Don't answer your phone at 11 p.m. unless the, the job really calls for that. But, you know, for me, you know, 5 p.m. work is there if I need to come back to it. But that's my time with my kids and my family. You know, if I didn't have that, I, I don't know where I'd be. And I know uh, as part of your activities, you've been very active with uh, the Alumni Association here at the law school. And part of that has been working with alumni and our current students in several ways. Can you talk a little bit about what the Alumni Association does and also how it helps to foster those relationships, not just with fellow alums, but also students that are currently taking classes here? Sure. So we started the Alumni Association back in 2015. A uh, bunch of uh, prior alumni, uh, we didn't really have that connection. You know, People that have gone to undergrads, Penn State, Maryland, Pittsburgh, the big schools, they have those mm-hmm. big alumni groups. Weiner didn't have that. So in 2015, we formed the Alumni Association, had about 20, 25 members at the time, with the goal to help alumni know what's going on on campus, Mm -hmm. give them opportunities to serve or to volunteer, and then for the students to really kind of help bridge uh, the gap between law school and real careers out there. Uh, So there's about, uh, I want to say there are 22 members on my board. Uh, I've been fortunate to serve the last two years as the president. Uh, Linda Ramby, who's one of the earlier classes, she'll be following my footsteps come July 1st. She'll take over as president. Uh, but we're, we're very fortunate. We have members from the very first class all the way up to the most recent class and everywhere in between. With our goal to invite students to, you know, the, the networking happy hour welcoming, uh, welcome back event we just had, what, two, three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, huge success. First one we had since we threw the first one pre-COVID. It was just great to see alumni who I haven't seen some people in over 10 years since since I graduated. Mm-hmm. Um, it also gave up people the opportunity to know, hey, we need volunteers for moot court coming up because the competitions are starting up. We need judges for the mock trial teams that are going to start competing again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're looking for contributions for the for the uh, for the journals. We use the Alumni Association to get that information out for us, for the alumni as well. And to know, too, like, here's what's happening at campus, because not everybody stayed around Central PA like I may have. For our students, it's really to give them a, a, a window that they can use if they're looking for their career, right? So we want to make it that if they you know, need a mentor, if they are looking for a prospective employer, if they just want to talk to somebody say, what do I do in this circumstance? We mm-hmm. want the Alumni Association to be that for them. So that they can reach out to any of us and say, what do I do? Right. And we can kind of give that aspect because we've all had very different upbringings. We've all had very different legal careers. 
And our hope is that somebody's going to give them the answer that's best situated for them. Uh, so, you know, for students, we hope that they come to our events. Um, we, we try to make ourselves known at any of the big events, uh, the Dean's Picnic, the, the Welcome Back, which I know we're going to be doing that again. We'll partner up anytime we bring like Wheels for Heroes on campus. Right. Um, any main CLEs, we try to make sure we have the Alumni Association there. But, you know, thanks to the support of Dean Hussey and the leadership of Widener, you know, we've really been able to thrive and continue to build. Um, but we're always looking for, for new members, you know, anybody who has ideas, what they want to see on campus, uh, what they want to see the alumni to, or how they want us to get engaged. We're always looking forward to hearing that. So anybody who's interested, you know, contact Widener, contact myself. You know, they can find my contact information, you know, various places. Including on our website, which we will share. <laughs> <laughs> I expected that. Uh, but, you know, we want to hear from them. You know, if, if they can't commit to serving on the board, you know, it's quarterly meetings. But if they can't commit to that, we just want to hear. This is, you know, I want to have this kind of an event on campus. Mm -hmm. Or I'd love to see you guys do something like this in Pittsburgh or Philly just to come out our way. And we're always going to bring those ideas. And at the very least, have a conversation with Dean Hussey, with, with Dean Teplitz or Dean Morangelo to say, here's what our alumni are saying. This is how Widener can expand, and then we can see if it's doable. Definitely. We also wanted to mention that we do have a Facebook group called Widener Law Commonwealth Alumni Office and a group on LinkedIn called Widener Law Commonwealth Alumni. And as an additional uh, bit of information, we recently launched Widener Connect, which is our official networking platform, and that has a special group in it just for Widener Law Commonwealth alumni. And we will share these links um, on the podcast website as well. So be sure to check out our alumni section on our website at commonwealthlaw widener.edu and click the alumni tab on the top of the home page. Paul, we've covered a lot in a short period of time. Was there anything additional that you wanted to add? You, you know, again, uh, first of all, thanks for letting me be here today. I'm, sure. I'm really privileged to be here. Um, you know, there's so much that people can do for Widener and, and really it doesn't have to be full-time commitments. People that want to be adjunct professors, somebody that wants to volunteer to do a moot court team, just wants to spend a couple hours just to judge a moot court because they've gone to appellate cases. There's so much that can be done, and so any commitment somebody can give mm -hmm. is always a huge uh, appreciation to the students, especially, uh, but the alumni as well. And so I would encourage anybody listening that is interested in getting involved, reach out. I mean, there's so much that can be done to whatever level or interest you have. I can promise you we have something out there for you. Perfect. Well, Paul, thank you so much for your time with us today. Thank and you. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in. And until next time, take care and stay connected. Widener University Commonwealth Law School is the Pennsylvania capital's only law school, with three specialized centers of legal scholarship through its Law and Government Institute, Environmental Law and Sustainability Center, and Business Advising Program. Widener Law Commonwealth offers an exceptional learning experience that is personal, practical, and professional. Visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu for more information.